All right, greetings, everyone. Welcome to the fourth part of the video for section 7.3. Uh, continuing on with our study of half angle identities or double angle identities, excuse me. But we're actually going to focus on half angle identities in this final example. So as a reminder, at the end of the last video, these were the identities we were working with, the half angle and the power reduction. And so, as I just mentioned, we're going to look at an example using those half angle identities. All right, and we did kind of a similar example to this with double angle identities, but um, we're going to do it now with half angle identities. So here we're given that the sine of some angle alpha is equal to one third. Oops, sorry about that. And the alpha is in the second quadrant. And based on that, we want to find exact values for each of the following. So the sine of one half alpha, the cosine of one half alpha, and the tangent of one half alpha. Okay. Now, I want us to notice a couple of things here. First of all, in the information we're given, we're given information about the sine of the angle alpha. But down here, we're asked to find something of the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of one half alpha. Okay. And notice that that one half is on the inside of those functions. So it's not like we can just take the sine of alpha and multiply it by one half because that's not what's being by multiplied. That's not what's being multiplied by one half here. It's the angle itself that's being multiplied by one half. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Also, Notice that in each of these cases, for example, with sine of one half alpha, I can write the alpha as an alpha over one. And if I multiply one half times alpha over one, we'll end up with sine of alpha over two. And so that now is starting to look like that format we just saw, <clears throat> excuse me, in our half angle identities, right? And you probably see that we can do the same thing with cosine of one half alpha and make that cosine of alpha over two. That's supposed to be an alpha, not a two. And then the same thing with tangent of one half of alpha, we can make that tangent of alpha over two. Okay. All right. Now, the other thing is, as we go through these, we are not, I repeat, not going to find the value of alpha. Okay, that we do not need that information to work through this. Okay, so to find the sine of alpha over two or sine of one half alpha, we use our half angle identity, which tells us this is equal to plus or minus the square root of one minus the cosine of the angle alpha all over two. So notice that to find the sine of alpha over two, we need to know the cosine of alpha. But up here, we were only given the sine of alpha. So what are we gonna do? Well, we'll use that information to help us find the cosine of alpha, right? So I'll draw a little picture here off to the side. We're told that the angle alpha is in the second quadrant. So if we start here, rotate around to the second quadrant to get to where alpha is, that's supposed to be an alpha. There we go. We know the sine of alpha is uh, one third, which again, recall that sine is y over r. So we have one over three. So we know at the end here on the terminal side of our angle, the coordinates there are gonna be some value x comma one for the y value. We also know the length of the radius is three. Okay, <clears throat> and to find the cosine, we need to know what that x value is, right? And so to find the x value, we can make a right triangle here. Okay, we know that the vertical side here has a length of one because that's the value for y, and we need to find x. So we can set that up using our Pythagorean theorem, sort of x squared plus one squared equals three squared. And you can double check that when we work that out, we end up with x equaling the square root of eight, All right? Which if you wanna rewrite that, that can be reduced to two root two, but square root of eight is fine. So we know the value of x 
is square root of eight. But also, <clears throat> also notice because we're in the second quadrant, right? What do we know about the values of x there? Well, they're negative, right? So we know our value of x is negative square root of eight. All right. And from there, now we can find the cosine. So we know the cosine of alpha will be given by x over r. So that would give us negative root eight over three in this case. All right. So now that we have that, we can go back to the problem we were working on, finding the sine of alpha over two, which we have is plus or minus square root of one minus cosine of alpha over two. Plug that information in. So that'd be one minus negative square root of eight over three, that whole thing over two. And then we get to do lots of fun with fractions from there. Okay, so on the top there, we have a minus minus, which makes a plus. So I get two after we finish erasing, there we go. So this is now a plus. The one, we can make a one over one, get a common denominator with the root eight over three. And so when we do that, we'll now have three over three plus root eight over three, all over two, which there on the top, we can add the two fractions together and give us three plus square root of eight over three, that whole thing over two which now notice we have a fraction on the top. We can make the two on the bottom of fraction, two over one. So we're dividing with fractions. So this would become, uh, we'll do the next line over here. So be plus or minus square root three plus root eight over three times one half which gives us plus or minus square root of three plus root eight all over six when we multiply straight across here, okay? All right, now we are almost done with this part of the problem, but notice in this case, uh, we still have to deal with the plus or minus here. So remember with these, we can't have the sine or the cosine of an angle be both positive and negative. It has to be one or the other. So the question for sine of alpha over two would be which one is it in? Or which one is it? And to figure that out, we need to figure out which quadrant alpha over two is in. And here's how we can do that. We know that alpha, the angle alpha is in the second quadrant. Which if we think about what that means, right? It means alpha is over here, as we saw a few minutes ago, which means in terms of degrees, alpha is between 180 and 90, right? So we know that one way to write that is that 90 degrees is less than alpha, which is less than 180 degrees. So alpha is somewhere in there. But we're not looking for alpha, we're looking for what uh, this range is for alpha over two. So what we can do, as long as we do it on all parts of inequality, is divide by two, which would then give us 45 degrees is less than alpha over two, which is less than 90 degrees, which if alpha over two is between 45 and 90, then what we know about that angle is it's actually in the first quadrant, right? Because angles between 45 and 90 would lie there. All right, now why is that helpful? Well, that tells us then that because alpha over two is in the first quadrant, its sine value must be positive. So our answer here would be positive uh, three plus root eight over six. Okay. All right. Let's look at now for cosine of alpha over two and I'm gonna erase this stuff. So again, we said that we can rewrite cosine of one half alpha as cosine of alpha over two. And then we use our half angle identity for cosine, which tells us that this can be rewritten as plus or minus square root 
of cosine of alpha now, not alpha over 2, plus 1 over 2, which we just found a few minutes ago. The cosine of alpha is negative root 8 over 3 plus 1, all divided by 2. And I'm not going to go all the way through all of the steps on that one in this case. But if you work out the algebra, you'll end up with plus or minus 3 minus square root of 8 all over 6. Or you might write that as square root of negative root 8 plus 3 over 6. Either way, it's the same. And then we again have to decide whether this is positive or negative. And we again go back to the fact that we found that alpha over 2 is between 45 and 90. So we know that it's cosine value, or it's that means that alpha over 2 lies in the first quadrant, which means its cosine value is positive. So we would again have a positive answer here. Okay, so cosine of alpha over 2 in this case be positive root 3 minus root 8 over 6. All right, now looking at the last one, tangent of 1 half alpha which again, we can rewrite as tangent of alpha over two. And then we think about how could we find this because we don't, we didn't have a half angle identity for tangent. But we again use our tried and true identity that tells us that tangent of alpha over two can be rewritten as sine of alpha over two divided by cosine of alpha over two, which we just found the values for both of those. So the sine was equal to positive square root of three plus square root of eight all over six. And that's divided by the cosine, which we came up with as three minus root eight over six. And we can simplify this some more. And what I want us to notice is that both in our numerator and our denominator, we have things under roots. And if you recall, if we take a square root of a fraction, we have something like square root of two fourths. We know we can rewrite that as square root of two over square root of four. So the equality this way works. But because it's inequality, it also means the other way works, right? So if we have square root of 2 over square root of 4, we can rewrite that as root 2 over 4. Well, it's a similar thing here because we have the top. We're taking the square root of the top, and we have a square root of the bottom. We can write them together under one big square root of 3 plus root 8 over 6 over 3 minus root 8 over 6. So now everything's under the same root. Notice we have a fraction being divided by a fraction underneath the root. So we can use our fraction algebra to rewrite that as square root of 3 plus root 8 over 6 times. We flip the second fraction, so it becomes 6 over 3 minus root 8. Here the 6s will cancel. This will end up being the square root of 3 plus square root of 8 over 3 minus square root of 8. Okay. And I know it's always a little uncomfortable. We end up with roots under roots, but that's totally legal mathematically. In fact, we have a special name for that. It's called nested roots. Um, but yeah, that would be it for the tangent. We found an exact value there. All right. That's it for section 7.3. Thank you for watching.